hand up. And then I said, oh my God, believe me, I started, to, I don't know why. I was there, I knew while I was looking at me in my bedroom and I started crying. Believe me guys, I started crying. Like, you know when you cry like a baby? I started crying, I started crying, crying. And I remember I was even holding my spliff. And I told Allah, that day I make dua to Allah for the first time, proper dua. I told him, Allah, I can change. Please, you change me because I'm not going to change. I like smoking, I like shooting, so I'm, I'm just going to leave it to you. But please, I, I, I believe me, I fear you, I, I, I love you. And believe me, you just have to help me because I can't help myself. Please. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Yes, hello people, my name is Martin. My Muslim name is Martin. And I've been a Muslim for six months. Hola, mi gente. Mi nombre es Martín. Y es, eh, mi, mi nombre musulmán es Martín. Y soy musulmán por seis meses. I grew up from, in Bolivia, South America. Um, my mom, she was the... She was the secretary of, her, of my school, and my dad, he, he used to work in the university. Um, I remember my auntie, she, went to, she came here to England like two years away before my mom went to, came here. And uh, when my auntie came back to Bolivia, one day she told my mom, why don't you come with me to England, to London, to go and live there? So my mom, she left us maybe two years, two, for two years she went to England first, to London. And I stayed with my grandma and my sister. We stayed over in Bolivia. And then after two years, we, my mom decided to bring us here to London. So we came here, you know, I was, ten year, I, was, I was nine and a half, well, nine years old. And I remember I didn't speak no English. And I went straight into primary school. In primary school, I remember I met people from, you know, Africa, people from Jamaica, people from uh, China, people from Somalia, people from Turkey, Bangladesh, and, which I never know. I, I, didn't, I never knew that, they, that this, this type of um, nationalities existed here. So Alhamdulillah, it was such a lovely experience for me to come to London. And I went to school. Well, I, well, I, I went to the last year of primary school. Once I finished primary, I, dis I went to George Orwell, which is um, a school in North London in Finsbury Park. And I went there for five years. And you know, when I was young, you know, you know how it is. Sometimes you don't concentrate. And my English wasn't that good, but I made friends. I got used to the language. I got used to England. And yeah, and I had uh, my best friend, he was from Somalia. And my other good friend as well, he was from Turkey. So once school finished, I remember I went with two GSCSEs. <laughs> I remember I had uh, drama and Spanish. <laughs> that's, the old, that, that's the only two GCSEs I actually passed. So I, when I went to college, I decided to study, um, I decided to study arts and design because I've always been an artist. I never, I never used to like reading. I never used to like writing. So I, I said, you know what? I like drawing. I used, I used to, I wish to love expressing myself. So I went to do arts and design in Hammersmith College. In Hammersmith College, I did arts and design for three years. I remember. After three years, um, everything went good because you know. At the same time, I remember when I left the school, you know, I remember them times when I left the school, I, I, you know, I, I used to meet a lot of Colombians, a lot of Peruvians, because we're South Americans. And I remember, you know, we, I, but that was the times when I actually knew England a bit negative in the sense, you know, we were young, we used to go and rob uh, stores, you know, we used to rob people. And I remember there used to be the triads back in the days, which was, you know, the Chinese triads. So, because uh, I live in King's Cross, I remember that area was very, um, Famous. So that, that was the first time I actually saw a, a negative side of England. After, while, after that, I've always, been, I've always been in kind of guys that uh, I'm very calm. I'm, you know, I, I, never, I, I, I try to get away from that people. And I try to get away from all my friends, really. And really so I, started, I went to college. And I remember in college, I decided to listen to the teachers. I decided to study. I said, you know what, this time I want to study. I want to do good because in school I was really bad. And I remember when... I came to, I studied uh, arts and design for three years. And then once I finished the, the arts and design, I actually went to Savor College and I did graphic design for two years there. I did a HD and a H and D, sorry. And then it was good. It was actually, I, I really liked um, graphic design, you know. And, and um, once I did my two, my two years of graphic design, I actually went to Croydon College to do my BA honors as a, as a graphic designer. And uh, I remember I did two years there. I passed with a, with a BA. I didn't pass with the honors, but alhamdulillah, you know, I did pass with the BA, you know. 
So that was the time that was, that was well, roughly 2003 when I actually finished my university. At the same time, you know, since I was 16, I remember when I, when I, when I met the Colombian guys, I started smoking weed. So I remember since I was 16, I used to smoke weed every day. And even when I used to go to college, I used to smoke weed. When I used to go to, to university, I used to smoke weed. And obviously the first time my mom, she caught me smoking. She didn't like it. She threw the bag. But alhamdulillah, you know, because she saw me, I was uh, doing, I was studying, I was putting, I was, I was um, responding in my studies. She actually, she didn't, allow, you know, she said, okay, she knew I was smoking, but she allowed me. So alhamdulillah, at, the, at, at, at 2003, I, I stopped uh, university. So I remember probably 2003, it was, you know, I was smoking weed every day. I was addicted to weed. And I didn't have money, because, you know, once, once you finish university, you don't have money, you don't have an income. So I was worried, obviously, because how, how, how was I meant to support my, my addiction if I didn't have no money? So I remember I, sometimes I used to go to my mom's purse, I used to <laughs> steal a bit of 10 pounds, and my mom would say, what is that, I had that 10 pounds in my pocket, in, in my purse, and I used to say, no, I don't know. So, you know, sometimes you, uh, wallahi, sometimes, you know, m evil things make you do evil things. So Alhamdulillah, after, after a while, I remember, I said, I'm not, I don't want to do these things anymore. And I remember I had a dog, you know, she was, she was a Springer Spaniel. I used to take her to the park in my area. I used to take her to the park all the time. And I started meeting the people, you know, I started meeting, you know, some friends that I had done this. I remember there was one Colombian guy as well. And that was the first introduction to, as you say, the road in, in England. I, you know, back in the days, I never knew, I never knew, I never hung around in the street back in the days. I was always in, um, in a school. I was always in college and I was always in university. Obviously, obviously, back in the days in the 90s when I used to hang around with the Colombians, it was just because they, they, they used to play football with me and some of them used to go to school. But I never actually used to hang around in the street. So alhamdulillah, you know, every day I used to go to the park. And I remember I met a lot of friends, you know, everybody. I remember they all used to sell drugs. No, I've always been a nice guy. I've always been the kind of guys that my, my friends used to call, used to, they used to tell me their problems, and I say, why is he telling me his problems? But they used to tell me mine. I think you're a very nice guy. Your attitude, your, you know, you don't, you don't, you, you know, you don't try to be them kind of rude boys. So I like you. So Alhamdulillah, that was nice. Alhamdulillah. And I remember I met a friend, I'm not going to say his name, obviously, he was from Turkey. And I remember one day he said to me, I told him, you know, oh man, I, I need to smoke some weed, I don't have no money. So he said to me, don't worry, you, if you want, I can give you a little cue. You move this cue and, you, and, then, and, then, and, then, and then you can smoke for free. So that's, that's, that was my introduction to the, to the shaitan life, you know. So alhamdulillah. I remember I got the queue, I was doing it, I, I used to do like big bags, so I used, I, used to, I used to get rid of it really quick, I used to go back to him, and I remember again, he, I used to go back again, so he used to tell me, you know what, let me just give you a half an ounce, so it, it was the same. I used to get rid of, you know, I used to do really quick, so he used to tell me, wow, you're already coming to me within hours, so he used to tell me, you know what, take an ounce, <laughs> and I remember this, 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 this was, this is how the shaitan gets you, this is how the shaitan, you know, is planning something for you. Alhamdulillah, this was in 2003. And then I remember, before I knew it, I was a shota. Before I knew it, I mean, really, truly, I, I never intended to become a shota. I never intended to be a drug dealer because that wasn't my plan. I, I, it wasn't my plan to be that. But alhamdulillah, you know, sometimes the, the, the Allah tests you and the shaitan give, give, gives you that extra hand that you, that you can just get into that dark life. So 2004 comes, still shot in. 2005 comes, still, and I remember the first time I, I, I brought money to my mom, I gave my mom 70 pounds, and then my mom used to, I used to give her 70 pounds every two days. I said, I said, keep it for me, keep it for me, stay, stay, keep it for me. And then my mom, used, she, one day she asked me, where are you getting that money from? So I told her, no, you know, I'm just working, I'm trying to, I'm, I'm, I'm selling some things from products. And, but she knew, you know, moms are not dumb. Moms, they know, they know when you, they, you know, they, they can sense, even though they know. So 2005, 2007, and you know, this is the way the shaitan gets you, when you are, giving money to your mom, when you are giving money to your family, you know, your family, it shuts them up. You say, ah, you know, why even though he's giving money, let me not tell him now, let, let, let him do this. So look, look at the way the shaitan blinds, not only you, but it blinds even your family and, and gets into your family, making you comfortable, making her comfortable to say, oh, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. So it was 2005, 2006, 2007. And I remember in 2007, I started writing lyrics, you know, in, in Spanish, you know, in, in Espanol. 
I remember a, a hip hop Spanish, I started writing, and I remember I got into the music, even worse. I mean, this is the shaitan life, even more, I, I, go, I go more into it. Subhanallah, now, now I say to myself, thank God, you know, I'm out of this, but anyway, I was doing, I was doing the music, I was doing the shooting, and I remember I didn't work for 11 years, I, I, didn't, I didn't work for 11 years, because, you know, I, I say, I, I've seen a lot of my friends, they used to shoot, Yet after, within two years, they, used to, they stopped, you know, because they couldn't hack it. Because when, you, when you're a shooter, you have to be a nice guy. You have to be a, you, don't, you cannot be a rude boy. You have to look after your, your, your clientele. And, you, and you basically, you, you cannot be something that actually the road tells you to be. You know, you, you have to be totally different. You have to be a nice guy. You have to be professional. And 11 years, well, basically it was 2007, 8, 9, 10. And my mom used to tell me, what are you going to do? Why, why, why are you gonna, and you going to work? And I used to tell her, I don't care. If I go to prison, I'm gonna shoot. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep on shooting. I remember that. That's how. That's how bad the shaitan made me do. I, I used to tell my mom, I don't care. I'm gonna shoot. And my mom used to tell me, whatever if you go to prison. I said, I, if I go to prison, I don't care. I, I don't mind. You know, really and truly, the shaitan for me to go to prison, it was it was actually a merit. You know, I used to think, yeah, if I go to the prison, actually, you know, the guys in the street, especially the the ones who was doing music, you know, the people that were listening to my music, I would say, yeah, it's gonna be even big. And I don't care. It was weed. At the end of the day, you know, for cannabis, you may maximum you go is three years. That's nothing, alhamdulillah. So I said, you know, let me, let me show that we just keep on doing 2009, 8, 10, 11, 12. And I remember in 2012, I started to go to the church because, you know, my life was so negative, guys. I was smoking with every day like a chimney. I mean, if you ask my friends, they, I used to do my fat splits that they used to tell me, man, would you put too much in your splits? Too much. Like, really, truly, you put nearly, nearly half a ten. Like, half, I said, I used to smoke so much, my brother. I used to get so skinny. Alhamdulillah, now, now that I stopped smoking, I'm actually more fat now. I, I see myself more stronger. So alhamdulillah, I remember it was 2010, 11, and then 2012 I went to the church. Because, you know, if I die, I've always been God conscious, but not very God conscious. Because, you know, when you're in England, in England the shaitan, you know, he makes you, he entertains you. He says, no, 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 don't think of God. So alhamdulillah, in 2012 I started to go to a Christian church, which was a Colombian Latin American church in Bond Street. Alhamdulillah, that's, that's how Allah, I mean, that's how Allah actually started getting me to him, you know. So I remember I went to church and then I used to go home. I used to smoke my spliff. I said, you know what, instead of me watching videos, instead of me watching, you know, uh, movies, let me go and watch pastors, you know, if, uh, let me watch Christian pastors because I wanted to keep myself entertained, but with God. So, you know, I started to watch Christian pastors, Alhamdulillah. And I remember I used to have my friend, I, I can actually say his name, his name is Sergeant, he's from Bangladesh, my, my brother. You know, he used to come to my house every day, very close friend of mine, we used to smoke the 24-7 in my bedroom. And then I remember one day I showed him, I said to him, you know, watch it, check this English, these uh, Christian pastors, the way they take out the demons, you know, the way they do, say, the way they, they fight against Satanism. I was very interested in that. And then he said to me, you know what, man, let me show you something before that. And, you know, me, I've always been the kind of guy that I used to like my way. But I don't know, that day I said to myself, you know, let, let him show me what he wants to show me. So he shows me uh, the purpose of life of Khalid Jassin. Islam, and even though my friend, you know, uh, 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 Sergeant, he was, he's not a proper, proper, he doesn't practice Islam. But yet he's the one that got me into it. So I started to watch, you know, they believe in Jesus, Islam, we believe in Jesus that the only purpose is to, to worship God. I was thinking, yeah, it's true, it's true, yeah, yeah. So every, I was agreeing with him, everything I was agreeing. I was just saying, it's true, it's true. So then I said to myself, then he says to me, oh, no, wait a minute. Because he saw me, I was proper, he saw me that I was proper excited. So I said to myself, wow, this is, I mean, this is, Islam is not just about this, it's about this. I, I was actually very impressed the way Islam with the way Allah in the last religion, which is Islam, changes you from the inside to the outside. And I said to myself, wow, this is incredible. So I started to, I, you know, it happened a couple of, one week happened, I, I went to Bolivia, I mean, I went to uh, the church. I was going to the church and I remember they were talking about Jesus. And at that time I never used to realize, but then they were talking about Jesus. Oh, Jesus Christ. I'm thinking, but wait a minute, where is this guy talking about Jesus? We're talking about God. I'm, re I'm praying to God. I never, I never used to realize that until I actually saw Islam. So I remember the second week came to go to church and I said to myself, you know what, this is, I'm, I'm not going to, I can't come, I can't be a Christian anymore because my ideology is actually, I'm actually against this because, you know, they put Jesus first in, instead of God and God always has to come first. So Alhamdulillah, I remember 
this brother, I was walking one day, it was this brother, I was walking just near my house, and then I saw this brother called Mohammed, and Khalid, which is from Morocco, he's my, he's my friend from back in the days, like this guy, and, and I remember he says, hey, mine, so he stops me, and I'm like, yeah, what's up, he was with his other two Muslim brothers, and he says, yeah, salam alaikum, how are you, and I told them, you know what, I want to become into Islam, I like Islam, so they said to me, so Mohammed, he's from Bangladesh, he says to me, let me take you to the mosque in King's Cross. Uh, I said, ah, cool, cool, yeah, take me to the mosque. And I remember then times, my brothers, you know, I was smoking weed. I used to chew gut, you know, gut, it was this Somalian plant. I was doing this 24-7, really, actually, in my bedroom. Like, I, I didn't even used to go out. And I remember, let's go. So I went in the evening. He took me to the Isha prayer, alhamdulillah. And I remember, believe me, guys, yeah, the first time I went to the mosque, you can sense, you know, the smell of the mosque. And I said, oh, my God, all these people are coming to pray on a Friday. And it was a lot of people, and I said, and, and then, you know, I started praying with them. Obviously, I didn't know what to say. I didn't know what to, how to recite. I didn't know what to do in the prayer, saying the prayer. So I was just following them. And alhamdulillah, you know, what happens? I said to myself, people were telling me, take your shahada, Martin, take your shahada. But I was thinking, but wait a minute, how can I take my shahada if I'm smoking weed, if I'm shooting? And I'm, and I'm actually, I can't because I, I like smoking and I like shooting and I, I don't want to. I, I don't want, so they used to tell me, take your shahada. So I used to tell them, no, don't worry, my brother. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to, uh, let, me, let me get ready. And then and they used to tell me, no, but you're going to die. If you die now, you're going to end up, you're not going to end up in Muslim. So I used to say, oh my God. So I said, you know, just give me. And I remember one of them guys tell me, uh, he made me do my shahada. And I took my shahada, but really and truly I was telling God, I'm, God, this is not the real one. I, the, real, the, the real time I take my shahada, believe me, you will know God. Because, you know, I, believe me, in Islam, yeah, I start fearing Allah. I start fearing Allah. The time I knew Allah created the shaitan, Allah created the jinns, Allah created evil, Allah created good. I said, if you don't want to mess with this Allah. Because she's too powerful. I mean, he will torture you if you, if you are a pedophile, if you are a killer. So alhamdulillah. I started, so I remember two months actually happened. I was going to the, to the mosque just on the Isha time. I used to go to the Isha time. And I remember the more I used to go to the mosque, the more my iman used to get higher and higher and higher. And it was one Friday night, I remember. No, actually, it was another, another one, one night, I remember, when I was watching, you know, these things about the judge, Day of Judgment, Janna, Jahannam. And then I said, oh, my God, believe me, I started. I don't know why. I was there, I knew while I was looking at me in my bedroom, and I started crying. Believe me, guys, I started crying. Like, you know when you cry like a baby? I started crying, I started crying, crying. And I remember I was even holding my spliff, and I told Allah, that day I make dua to Allah for the first time, proper dua. I told him, Allah, I can change. Please, you change me, because I'm not going to change. I like smoking, I like shooting, so I'm, I'm just going to leave it to you. But please, I, 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 believe me, I fear you, I, I, I love you, and believe me, you just have to help me because I can't help myself. Please, Alhamdulillah, I remember maybe two weeks after, I was, doing, I was on the same routine every day, you know, being at home. I, I never used to go out. I was, I was always at home because when you're a shorter, you don't want to be on road. You don't want to bait yourself up. So you just, you just have to be home out, home out. So Alhamdulillah, I remember after two, ma two, two weeks after, I remember I was going to the mosque once a day. And then I stopped going for the I stopped going for the most for a whole week. I stopped because I told myself, you know what? Before I take my shahada, I don't want to go. I, I was feeling hypocrite. I was thinking, but wait a minute, how can you be doing this? And I, I'm just before the, going to the mosque, I used to smoke my spliff. I used to say, let me smoke. And then I used to go in busing. I used to go to the mosque. Yeah, this is wicked. So alhamdulillah, I remember on a Friday. This was a Friday, yeah. I, I'm, I had I probably had uh, one li of one bank one tenth of a bag, and I had to reload the next day. And I remember when I reloaded. It, my friend used to give me for free. Uh, this was another Jamaican guy that he, uh, he used to give me a key for free. I, nev I never used to pay for my food. He, they used to, he, he used to give me, he say, you know, when you finish it, take more. So I never used to pay for my food. They, they, I've always get it, I always used to get in consignment. And I remember this, with this guy, I worked, I worked for three, four years actually, Alhamdulillah. Very, may Allah guide him. And I remember, I said to him, I have to reload tomorrow. And I said, you know what, no, no, no. I, there was something in my heart, I was telling me, no, no, no. You know what, this is it. You know, this is it, and I was thinking, oh my God. And I started actually feeling proper excited because I was thinking, oh my God, oh my God, it's Friday tomorrow, tomorrow is Sasha. Oh no, I don't know, should I take my shahada? So, and then I said, you don't want to be reloading anymore tomorrow. You don't reload anymore because you're going to get back. And then, Alhamdulillah, I, on a Friday night around 2 o'clock in the morning, I decided to say, you know what, tomorrow I'm taking my shahada. And I remember I had my spliff there. I said, you know what, let me roll up my last spliff, because it wasn't my life. I had literally one spliff left, that's it. So I rolled up my spliff. I remember around 3, 4 o'clock in the morning, I was like this. I was like, 
you know, I was like, I was, I was proper trying to smoke it because I said, tomorrow I'm, I'm going to stop, the whole shabang. And then, alhamdulillah, I went to sleep. I called, I, in the morning, I called my friend. I called Khalid and I called Mohammed, the, the, the guy from Morocco and the guy from Bangladesh. And I told me, guys, I want to take my shahada tomorrow. I want to take my shahada. They were so happy for me. The first thing they said to me, oh, mashallah, brother, I'm so happy for you. Let me take you to East London Mosque, to the Whitechapel Mosque. You have to take your shahada there. Alhamdulillah. I said, yeah, cool, cool. So I remember I bought my, I bought my Muslim clothes. I, you know, I bought the whole uh, shabang. We went to, to, we, we went to Whitechapel. In Whitechapel, I remember I took my shahada maybe, maybe in front of 150, maybe 200 people. I remember the, the mosque was packed. And I took the la ilaha illallah. And then I remember, once I took my shahada, a lot of people, they came, they started hugging me, they started kissing me. The kids, mans, everyone hugging me, alhamdulillah. And that's it, and then I became a Muslim, subhanAllah, my brothers. And then from then, I haven't looked back. I, I haven't looked back. I've only, I've, I've actually been a Muslim. I stopped smoking, I stopped the whole shabang, and I actually stopped the music as well. SubhanAllah, it's amazing the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can change people, coming from the life that you lived before, and now that SubhanAllah, you completely change your life. Now, can you tell the viewers how Islam has changed your life? Well, Islam, Islam changed my life because in a big way, in a dramatic way, in the sense now I don't go out, I don't link girls, I don't smoke obviously, I don't even do the music. And Alhamdulillah, I remember the first time I, I told my mom that I was going to become a Muslim, she actually laughed at me, she started laughing. I, I was surprised at her reaction, but she started laughing because she, she probably knew me better than I did. So she probably thought, no, he's not going to stop. So I remember when I, when I actually showed her that I stopped, and I, I remember the day I told her I'm going to take my shahada, my mom, she started to cry. She started crying, and she gave me a kiss in the cheek, and she said, you know what, I'm so happy for you that you want to change your life. And it's been, out, it's been six months now, you know, six months now that I've been a Muslim. I, it was my first Ramadan. It was a bit hard, I have to admit, I'm not going to lie. It was hard. I was getting mad headache because, you know, when you don't eat, you don't eat, you drink. Believe me, you, you have to sleep. And uh, yeah, my brother, you know, my, I'm, grow, I'm growing my beard. I'm gonna grow my beard long. And you know, I'm, I'm dressing different now. I, I don't go clubbing anymore, because back in the day I used to love salsa. Salsa was the, I mean, Latin American clubs, that's the thing I used to be all the time, salsa, salsa. I don't go clubbing anymore. And subhanAllah, I'm looking to get married next year. So yeah, Alhamdulillah, Islam changed my life in a positive way. I fell in love with God in Islam, I swear. I, fe I fell in love with God in Islam now. Now, for me, Islam, I mean, um, Allah is every day. Because you have to go to prayer five times a day. You know, sometimes the Fajr prayer is very hard. So, you know, you try to, if you don't do, go down there, you have to do at home. But, you know, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a still a challenge, but alhamdulillah, it's in a positive way. And sometimes I say to myself, you know, if I die now, I don't mind, you know. I, I wouldn't even mind dying now because, subhanAllah, I know, I know, I know right now everything, my deeds are clear. So, alhamdulillah, I wouldn't mind dying now, even, even now, because... That's, that's, how, that's how Islam even changed my life. That I'm not even scared of dying anymore. SubhanAllah. You know, and Allah is the greatest, guys. You know, Allah is the, he is the Almighty. He, this guy, my brother, Allah is not human. He's not human. He's not, he doesn't have a beard. He doesn't, he's not a man within the throne. No one knows how Allah is. That's the reason why Allah will give us anything that we want. So, Akhi, yeah, my brother. what advice have you got to Muslims and also non-Muslims in regarding Islam. Obviously, we know the direction that you've come from. Mm -hmm. So what advice have you got to the viewers who are watching the show? All right, let me do this quick, guys. For the Muslims, especially for the youth in, here in the UK, my brothers, please dress like Muslims. Please grow your beard. Please be Islam from the inside to the outside. I see, I see you know, sometimes you, you, you see your sisters and your, or maybe your wife, and your wife is proper dressed like a Muslim. Even sometimes they even cover their faces. And you know, you see the guys dressing with, you know, very nice clothes. And you say, it doesn't, it doesn't adapt. It, it makes Islam look bad because English people that are not Muslim, they tell us, oh, you oppress your women. Or people here in the UK, they think that we are oppressing our women just because we're not dressing as well appropriately. And our sisters are dressing appropriately. And alhamdulillah, to all the, to all the youths that are not Muslim, I'm going to tell you this, guys, yeah. This is a movie. We're in a, we are in a real movie, my brothers. This is not, this is life, but life is a movie where it, maybe your movie is going to last 70 years, but it's going to have a dramatic ending. So always remember that life, that, that if you, whatever you do now, believe me, guys, yeah, it's not worth it. It's not worth you looking at the, you know, the um, rappers, the artists, you know, Snoop Dogg, all this. Believe me, yeah, 
Back in the days, I used to see them big. Now I see them like losers. I, I actually, nowadays, I actually see 50 Cent. I see Snoop Dogg and I say, I actually feel sorry for them. I swear down. I say, oh, this guy, he doesn't know what he's getting into because they are living the life there. But believe me, guys, why do you, you want to live the life in this world where you know, you're going gonna, you're gonna to last? You're going to die one day and no one's going to remember you. So it's not worth you following these rappers, for you following this, um, the media. Believe me, guys, just try to, try to be a good person. Try to be good to your mom and try to just be good to your friends and believe me, you, you we are in a movie, Aki. So always remember that, just remember that there's a creator in it. So Alhamdulillah, I just want to wish everyone in the UK everything the best, especially all the youth. You know, I see all the, all the youth walking with knives, with guns. And I've been attacked with guns, I've been attacked with them. So I know, I know they, they are walking with guns, they are walking with knives. And I know, I know they, they, um, they are living this road life. Alhamdulillah, I, I hope, I hope, I hope you can Inshallah. open your eyes and I hope uh, Islam, I hope you can actually look into Islam. And if, if you don't be, if you don't believe in God, just ask him one day, tell him to guide you and subhanAllah, he will guide you in his way, he will guide you. On the ending note, do you want to give the viewers something in Spanish? Because we know we speak in Spanish just before we finish it off yeah, quickly, yeah. Inshallah. Alhamdulillah, I want to say to all the Latinos here in the UK, hola mis hermanos, eh, me, eh, espero que les haya gustado este video. Y es una invitación para que vengan a Islam, la última religión que Dios nos dio. Hermanos, ustedes piensen que, que siempre tenemos que ser unidos, tenemos que mantenernos positivos, tenemos que estar como hermanos, her hermandad. Y un saludo para todos mis hermanos latinos ahí en Latinoamérica, en, 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 en Sudamérica, en América, en Europa. Y sí, hermanos, ustedes solamente eh, eh, confíen en Dios y, y ustedes verán que el, usualmente el... el eh, La unión hace la fuerza, como que se dice, hermano. O sea, tenemos que tratar de mantenernos unidos. Hoy en día hay mucha corrupción, mucha corrupción, mucha, muy, nuestros hijos, nuestros niños, nuestros, eh, los, van, va, están sufriendo, hermanos. O sea, por favor, tratemos de estar positivos y, y vean a Islam. Islam es lo mejor. Mm,